Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby and I'm going to get started right away by introducing myself in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. I'm a best-selling author, speaker and relationship attraction expert helping strong successful women find balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Yeah, I've said that a few times so it becomes easier to say. And the truth is I'm, I'm really a student of life, of love and of consciousness as well. So this topic is actually exploration in a way and also download what I already know and probably download stuff I don't know yet. So if you've seen my broadcast before, I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's one is number 354, um, keeping track, <laughs> why not? And today's topic actually was inspired by an, an email from a client about the integration of masculine and feminine. And I'm calling it the next level because I've talked about this before slightly, but what I've been talking about mostly in these conversations about how women can own their feminine, men can own their masculine, and this sort of stuff. But the reality, and I've said this before, is that we are made up of a mix of those things. So each of us, male and female, whatever gender you choose to call yourself, has a blend or a mixture of masculine and feminine that adds up to 100% of who you are. So, for example, and I've talked about this before, so I'm just reiterating before I just lay the groundwork for this talk. And I'm jumping right in, so I hope you caught up with me because I was like, right into the topic. Um, as a, what I would call now masculine man, owning my masculine heart more than ever before, I'm not 100% masculine. Um, I'm probably around about 70, 75% masculine, 25, 30% feminine in my, uh, who I am as naturally, and like natural residence. It's like, if there's a spectrum from masculine to feminine, very, very, very few people live at each end. Like a bell coat, well, that's not a bell coat. Most people live, actually, in a way, if you look at it, the spectrum, be two bell coats, one on the masculine side, one on the feminine side. And so there's a majority of people live in the middle of that side of the spectrum, and then there's very few people live in the middle. So very few people on each end, very few people in the middle, but most of us live on like the middle range of the masculine feminine overlap, and the equivalent number live on the same side, the other side. So the masculine feminine balance, or integration as I was calling it, is to really own both parts. And, and there was something else coming through. I'm just laying the groundwork. Let me back up again. You know, it's one other piece I want to give to, the, give to you. This is based on the principle of masculine and feminine expression being an awakened state of being. I spent many years of my life before I started doing this work totally oblivious to this work because I didn't know about it. And many people do walk around oblivious to this work. And what it puts us, it puts us in the place of is the, uh, the unawakened or the, um, well, let's just say the unawakened state. So you may have masculine feminine polarity inside of you, but it's not woken up. It's not woke. <laughs> but it's also not integrated. And for many of us, we live in a false sense of identity, more in the, for the men, either the macho side of things, which I didn't want to do when I was younger, or the nice guy or the beta male way, which is what I did as well. So there's all different aspects of the, un the unawake or the undeveloped uh, male embodiment, because not really masculine. And the fem on the woman's side, there was a range of expressions that women carry when they're not in their awakened feminine state, which is a range of, and I've got to be careful because some of these words can be derogatory, is that for some women on that side of the spectrum, um, the unawakened state would be the meek housewife or the even the victim role, which a lot of women have played in the past. Now, I'm not saying it's all, just one, pe one sliver. Also, well, women have been very bossy and have been labeled as the B word, you know, being called a bitch because they were driven hard and making things happen. But what they were doing is they embodied the macho way of being, not the masculine, but the macho way of being, because that's the way, especially in the business world, women were required to step into to be successful because the business world was established by men as a men's way of doing things. And so women had to compete in that arena by acting like the men. But they were labeled because they were being so powerful as a limited term because men didn't see women as powerful in their feminine. And so they label them as whatever word to make that, to make that dis, um, description. So that's the old fashioned or the unawake or the undeveloped state. Now I'm speaking about the developed rate of being where we're awake to our masculine, awake to our feminine, and now waking to the integration of both. Because to be honest, when I first started doing this work, um, the masculine feminine context, I was so 
hungry for and passionate about discovering what the masculine meant to be, meant to me, meant to be, because I realized got clear that where I had been living wasn't that. And when I started discovering what the true masculine heart was about, I was going, that's what I've been wanting all my life to be honoring, to be owning, to be standing in, to be serving from, to express from this. That's my passion. And what I also was aware of is I noticed the women, when they were in the feminine, was a very powerful place to be as well. And I was very enamored by it, frankly. That's one reason I speak about this so much. And so my clients help them get this because when I see women in the feminine, it's like the sun comes out in a way. But what I also was aware of back at the beginning was I wasn't yet ready then to look at the feminine side of myself. Because I, even though we talked about this in the training, in fact, there's a practice, and I'll give it to you now, this is a practice that I was instructed by uh, one of my teachers, Satyan Raja, um, part of Warrior Sage, which I studied back in 07, that really was a game changer. And he said that when it comes to relationships, and this is for those of you who are in relationship, and it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, because this is a polarity thing that works for both. And I'm going to explain why I mean, I mean it's going to be self-explanatory. So basically, when you, when you get to the bedroom and you're looking to enjoy some making love, having sex, having to do that together, a ritual you can do before you do that is energetically or symbolically or in, even metaphorically, so many choices, the woman can gather up all her masculine energy she's been carrying around all day at work and in business and doing things she was doing, getting things done, gather all that up into a bundle and give it to her partner for safekeeping. And the, well, I should say the feminine part versus the masculine partner because it could be gay relationships too, but generally speaking in a heterosexual format, that's what the woman would do for the man. The man would take up, would gather up all his feminine energy where he was doing like receiving and doing stuff that was more in the feminine mode, gather it up as a gift and give it to his partner for safekeeping. So what they were doing symbolically, one, to create more chemistry and polarity, but two, to actually create more connection. So the woman would give her ex, her masculine energy to the man for safekeeping, and the man would give these feminine energy to the woman for safekeeping, which says and states that we carry both. Hello. So that's what I want to speak about that in this point, about how it's the polarity we carry inside, which is movable, by the way. That polarity is not fixed. It does move around inside, depending on what's needed in the world. And part of this is to become um, facile with it, but also be appreciative of both sides. Because for some of us, and I used to be this way, there was a sense of, like, the, I didn't want to step foot on the other side. It was like, stay in the masculine, don't go to the feminine. And... A lot of men in the men's work are doing the same thing. They still are stuck in that rigidity where they want to stay masculine because it's the place to be because if you're determined in, you're weak and that sort of stuff and it's bullshit to be succinct. So what this, is, this message is about in a way is to talk about the integration and the bringing together of both inside of each of us. Both men and women carry both masculine and feminine energy within us. And again, as I said earlier, if you imagine like in the spectrum from, feminine, from masculine to feminine, there'll be two bell curves like on each side of the spectrum where there'll be a gap in the middle because the middle is very rare for people to reside in either. That's basically androgynous, and it's meaning there's no sexual polarity there. By residing naturally in your state on either side of that spectrum, masculine or feminine, is what creates the sexual chemistry in the first place. And that can be increased by doing what I suggested earlier in the practice. At the same time, in daily life, we are moving between masculine and feminine all the time. And so I'm talking about masculine and feminine integration. And I'll quit the next level because it's about how do we evolve and actually consciously become aware of and respect that within us and in other people. In the simple terms, the masculine energy is the one that gives and, and pushes and pursues. The feminine energy is what receives and opens up and attracts. So law of attraction, for example, is not just for women. <laughs> so the law of attraction literally the law of attraction is for anybody but and not but and to be receptive has to be in a feminine so the law of attraction works best when wh whoever's using it is actually in their feminine energy to become attractive to what they want to attract now there's masculine roles as well and that's the pursuing getting things done making things happen sort of thing and it's interesting because movement is feminine and stillness is masculine so sitting still for meditation is a masculine practice. Receiving divine inspiration is a feminine practice. So we're doing both at the same time. And when we recognize that, in fact, it's, it's hand in hand, that these, these pieces work together, is a recognition that we have that range, that power, that ability within us. 
So masculine and feminine is, is, does reside within each of us, and how we choose to express it is what makes us more effective or ineffective in the world, depending on how we do it. One of the pieces of that is a masculine man who is too masculine all the time may not have the space to be compassionate with his, comp with his co-workers or receptive to hearing from them. A feminine woman who's in the business world can be very expansive and collaborative and cooperative, but she may not be as decisive at making decisions because that's a masculine trait. So it's imperative. Yeah, that's a good word. Imperative for both sides of the conversation, for both men and women, to integrate both aspects because doing so gives us more facility and more ability to function, to respond, and to act in the world in an effective way. And this is not based on relationship, by the way. The masculine and feminine context is a way of living life. It's actually being functional in the world in every interaction, in every role, and in every activity during the day. And the thing is, you may be doing both without realizing it. When you're listening to somebody and receiving from somebody, you're actually near feminine. But you may not think about it that way. You're just going, I'm just listening. It may be when you're making decisions and getting things done, you're actually near masculine, but you may not realize that either. But the realization is, is that we have both. And the realization is that when we lead from the one that's most authentic, we know who we are. And it's that um, self-awareness that helps us move to the next level of awareness, obviously, and the next level of expression. So this, this chat, this talk here, I'm realizing it doesn't necessarily have a direction or a delivery of a point, as much as just to wake, wake you up, awaken you to the understanding that you have both inside of you. And you can choose to use them as you want. And you may even not notice that you're actually doing it. You're just doing it automatically without thinking about it. It gets to be interesting. As I said before, said earlier, there is definitely a people in the movement of both masculine movement and in the feminine movement where they're in a way um, excluding or not so much resenting, but excluding and ignoring the other side of the spectrum even though we carry both. And that's one thing I want to say to all of us, including myself, is there's no benefit to excluding one or the other. There is benefit for men and women. Yes, finding balance is such a challenge. I know, Karen, that, yes, that's part of the work I've been doing myself and doing my clients. And the truth about this um, balance or this, this range is it gives us more power. Because what happens is, if we are residing in one or the other, so say for example, I'm in my masculine, I'm ignoring the feminine side of myself, which is in me as well, I'm running on its 70% power. As I said before, if I'm, say, I give myself roughly 70% masculine and 30% feminine, if I exclude the feminine, that's only 70% of my energy available. So I'm not even at full strength, full ability, full facility. So having both inside is important for us to express fully. Now the balance. This is the piece about alignment and... Um, I was going to go off on a slight tangent, which I forgot. Let me, get, let me make that point. It's good, it's good at times to anchor in one side or the other to find out your natural resonance. If you're naturally more masculine, naturally more feminine, find a group of people that do the same thing where they go and practice or do things that support that energy. Um, in simple terms, for men, or I should say those who are being more masculine, maybe going out and playing sports, the competitive, maybe go hunting or go do combative type things because that's what masculine energy is about. If you're more in your feminine, you do more nurturing things, so you may go to the spa or go shopping. It sounds like that's women's stuff, but the truth is not. It's feminine energy because feminine energy loves that movement energy. And being in the spa, being restored, being pampered is a feminine trait. So there are men who like being pampered too. It's just not all the time. And so recognizing that, again, that we have both inside and that we honor both sides as we choose to and as we need to. Here we cover the points. There was another point I think was in there, but that may be it. So balance is definitely, I wouldn't say, Karen, it's, it's a challenge <clears throat> as much as it is an opportunity. Because the truth is, it is an opportunity. Because if you found that you couldn't do it before, then it's like, how can I do it differently going forward? Have a question each day, like, how can I express more of my feminine and my masculine today? In fact, that can be your homework. There's an idea. <laughs> Inspired homework today. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I, do usually, I usually do give homework out pretty much every day. So your assignment today, if you choose, is to look at, the, maybe at the end of the day do this as a first practice. I've got two ideas. One is that at the end of the day, is look back at your day and journal about what happened during the day. And if you want to, as you journal through the day, 
Notice and maybe mark against each activity action that happened. Where you were more masculine, where you were more feminine. Just to get a sense of it. It's not to do anything to change it. It's more to have a, um, an awareness, which is the first step to change is awareness. Secondly, if you want to add another piece to homework, yes, I'm going to double homework today. In the morning, before you start the day, set an intention of how you want to express during the day. If you want to stay more in one or the other. Not saying you must be in one or the other, but where do you like to spend more time in during the day? More masculine, more feminine. And maybe you want to discover how things could be different for you during the day. Now, one caveat. <laughs> I already saw this one coming. If you say at the beginning of the day, I want to be more masculine, get things done, make things happen. But after three in the morning, you realize you've got to be in a listening mode and be more receptive. Then you need, it's okay if you make a decision saying, you know what? I'm renegotiating. I'm going to stay more of my feminine in this moment. So I'm saying this to be aware because the thing about this, it's giving you more facility to change one from the other. And so this integration is knowing you can have both. Now, when you're on dates and in romantic settings, that's when you want to spend more time in one or the other side, more extreme, more, more, um, more increased, so you can be more attractive to each other because the polarity is created by the attraction of the opposites. If you're both on one side of the fence or the other side, it wouldn't work. You know, you like the idea of being more intentional about it. I tend to go from one extreme to the other. Well, that's the thing. You have dominion, Karen. You have the ability to do that. That's something that I learned myself is that I can be more able to just witness first and then respond versus react and change and jump and jump. So I can choose more carefully and then respond accordingly. So yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, it is... It is more intentional, but I would say you definitely can do it more um, elegantly too. So hopefully it helps you. So now you've got two, two homework assignments. Um, <laughs> usually it's only one, but this is two. So um, I think that's enough to, for today. I don't want to give much more homework. Um, thanks for the love and the thumbs up. I appreciate that. It's good to see everybody in this broadcast. So if you have any questions about this particular con question, conversation, please put them below and I'll answer them when I sign off. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, these are my daily Facebook Lives. This is number 100 and, sorry, 354, Messages to the Masculine Inspire the Feminine Heart. If you haven't seen these broadcasts before, you can see them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. That's where they all reside on my personal page. They get interwoven with other things. My business page has them all together. Or if you're on YouTube watching this, which you might be, this gets rebroadcast on YouTube later on, and you can watch them on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. And the playlist I play, put them on is Messages from the Masculine. If you want to get more clarity in this area, you want some help, and you want relationship conversation and get yourself more straightened up for where you want to go in your love and life, as you want more clarity, I do offer complimentary clarity conversation every, every day in my broadcast, which is on my website as well, which is barryselby.com. You click on the Let's Chat menu choice and sign up for this conversation there, and we can talk. My gift to you. Um, with that, I've given you homework, I've given you some ideas to think about, and I think that's about it. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being with me as always. I'm back in tomorrow with a new topic. And I'm going to forward this to the person who inspired this conversation in the first place because she wasn't in here yet. But maybe she'll be in, well, she wants the replay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.